Magandang hapon sa lahat. So ngayon ay tatalakayin natin kung paano nga ba sinusukat ang pambansang kita. Matatandaan sa nakaraang pagkikita ay tinalakay na natin na ang pambansang kita ay maaaring matukoy sa pamamagitan ng tinatawag nating uh, GDP at GNP. Pag sinabi nating GDP no o tinatawag din gross domestic product, ito ang kabuang produksyon na naisagawa sa loob ng pambansang ekonomiya. So mas madali natin siya matatandaan no? sa pamamagitan ng mnemonics na gawa dito sa Pilipinas o Pinas. Tinalakay din natin ng nakaraan na tinatawag nating GNP o Gross National Product. So pag sinabi natin Gross National Product, natatanda na ito ang kabuang produksyon na naisagawa ng mga mamamayan ng isang bansa. Ito man ay nasa loob o palabas ng pambansang ekonomiya. So mas madaling matatandaan gamit ang mnemonics na gawa ng gawa ng Pinoy. Oh. Tinalaki na natin ang kahulugan nito pero hindi pa natin nasusubukan kung paano nga ba susukatin o kukumpitin ang sinasabi natin GDP at GNP o pambansang kita. So pag sinabi natin yung pagsukat ng pambansang kita, may tatlong paraan ng pagsukat nito. So una, yung tinatawag na expenditure approach. From the word expenditure, ito yung mga gastos. No? Gastos sa buong bansa. At sasamahin lahat ng mga ginastos ng mga tao at mga iba't iba pang sektor sa pambansang ekonomiya upang malaman ang pambansang kita. Matatandaan sa pagkakot ng dalong ng ekonomiya na ang kita ay ma uh, na ang gastos ay maaari natin makita na o oh, may paliwanag na ang gastos ay uh, nagsisilbi naman kita ng ibang sektor. Halimbawa, ang sambahayan ay bumili ng produkto, gumastos ng sambahayan ng makabili ng produkto at itong gastos na ito ay nagsisilbing kita naman ng bahay talaga na siyang gumawa ng produkto. Now, ano nga ba yung uh, formula para makuha natin yung expenditure approach. So, dito sa expenditure approach, kukunin natin lahat ng mga pinagkakagasos sa nabawat o na iba't ibang sektor. So, una dyan yung letter uh, C. So, CC, it stands for personal consumption or household household consumption expenditure. So, ito yung mga gastos na, uh, na nagawa ng sambahayan. Sunod naman yung tinatawag natin ay sa letter ay this is investment but uh, or commonly known as capital formation. Sa capital formation, diyan matatagpuan yung uh, pag, when we say capital formation, uh, it comprises all the expenses made by uh, business firms. No? So, nandiyan yung durable equipments, building stocks, lahat ng mga gastos na ginawa ng uh, bahay kalakal or business firms. Next na sektor na kailangan natin is yung, of course, the government. When we say government, no, so matatandaan sa paikot na daloy ng ekonomiya na ang gobyerno ay gumagastos din upang makapagbigay ng transfer payment o mga serbisyo panlipunan. So ang tawag natin doon ay government consumption expenditure. We also have what we call net export. No? So, when we say net export, we 
have to get the difference of uh of the value uh of the total value of our exported goods uh than the total value that we import uh the, the goods that we imported you know so x stands for stands for uh export at m for import ayan no? so para makuha natin yung net export kailangan natin i-subtract si export kay import no so uh, this is to get the income no so again pag sinabi nating export um ito yung kabu kabuang gastos o kita natin sa uh, mga produktong uh, iniluluwas natin sa ibang bansa upang ibenta uh, i-minus natin ito sa lahat ng produkto na binibili natin mula sa ibang bansa next naman is yung tinatawag nating uh, statistical discrepancy so when we say SD or statistical discrepancy may mga pagkakataon na uh, may mga hindi maipaliwanag no na uh, excess or kulang sa ating computation so that is what we call statistical discrepancy so uh, these are the formulas that we need to get the value of GDP. So let me rewrite the formula. GDP is equals to household consumption expenditure plus investment or capital formation plus government consumption expenditure plus the difference between export and import plus statistical discrepancy. Now, so this is just the GDP o gawa lang dito sa Pilipinas. No? So, but when we say gross national product, uh, ito yung mga produkto o produksyon na naisagawa ng mga Pilipino nasa loob man siya o nasa labas ng bansa. If we're going to analyze the formula for GDP, wala pa dyan yung mga kinita ng ating mga OFWs. But to get that, uh, we need to get the we need to solve for uh, for the difference between the income of our OFW or overseas Filipino workers and all the foreigners who are working in our country. No, so para makita talaga natin kung mas kumita ba ang ating OFW dan yung mga foreign investors natin o mga foreign uh, foreign nationals na nasa loob ng Batsa. So, ang tawag natin dito is NFIA. No? So, pag sinabi nating NFIA o net factor income from abroad, also known as net primary income. income from abroad, we just need to subtract the income of our OFW than the foreign nationals na katrapo sa bansa. No? So, so, ilagay natin, no? Difference difference between the income of OF W's and foreign nationals working in our country. Now, so para makuha o oh, natin ang value ni GNP, we just need to add the GDP, the value of the GDP plus the NP. Yeah. So that's it. No? So this is the expenditure approach. No? So let's have an example. So say for example, here is the 
given. No? So, we have the total value of the following. So, let me rewrite first the given. So, say for example, in country X, meron siyang ganitong expenditure. Okay. So, sa letter C, uh, we have 30,552. Sa investment, 10,295. Sa government expenditure, 7,677. Sa export, 15,295. Import, 15,676. Statistical, I sorry. So fifteen thousand six hundred seventy six. Statistical discrepancy zero and net factor income from abroad nine thousand eight hundred fifty nine. Say for example, this is just for in a million prices. No, so now how will we get the GDP first. So let's have first the GDP. So take note to compute the GDP, we need to add the net fact, uh, the, the consumption plus investment plus government plus the net export plus the statistical discrepancy. No, so let's try. So the value of the consumption is 30,000. 552 my uh, plus 10,295 plus 7,677 plus the difference uh, the difference between the export and import or the net export, 15,295 minus 15,676 plus zero for statistical discrepancy. Now, if you notice, uh, we have to, uh, to differentiate first to get the value of the net export. No? So we have to differentiate this first. So... In order to get the value of the net export, x minus m, uh, we need to subtract first the export and the import. No? So, uh, if you notice, mas mababa si export kay import. Ibig sabihin, mas marami tayong in-import na goods than uh, uh, in the export. So, basically, we will... We, we know na magiging negative ang ating net export. So, yun yung nakakalungkot na meron sa at na nangyayari sa ating bansa. Diba? So, what is 15,295 minus 15,676 is equals to negative uh, 381. So, negative 381. So, we just need to replace this by negative 381. No? So, 30,000, rewrite na lang natin para mas maayos. 10,295 plus 7,677 minus 381 plus 0 equals So, of course, ano pa yung sagot natin? We have the GDP of A. That's right. 48,000 143. Now, how will we get the value of GNP? No? So again, pag sinabi natin GNP, GDP plus the value of NP. So our GDP is 48,143. So we just need to add the value. So equals uh, 48,143 plus 
143 plus and phi is 9, 9,859 is equals to our G and P is 58,002. Right. Now, so this will be our final answer. Yeah. Now, the second one na pwede natin magamit uh, in order to get the value of the GDP and GNP is yung tinatawag natin value-added approach or industrial origin approach. So, sa value-added approach, uh, ginagamit natin ang mga sektor o primary sector na meron sa ekonomiya ng bansa. Katulad ng so, industrial origin approach eto yung mga kailangan. So, una is yung tinatawag nating A, I, S. So, sa A is A is agriculture. I for industry. And S for services. Pag sinabi nating uh, agriculture, nandito yung mga uh, produkto katulad ng gulay, prutas, ah, uh, we also have here the poultry. Pag industry naman, those are the manufactured goods, mga tapos na produkto. And when we say services, tabi lang dito yung communication, transportation, so on and so forth. In order to get the GDP using the value-added approach or industrial origin approach, we just need to get the sum of the three sectors. No, So, uh, agriculture plus industry plus services. Simple as that. Now, how will we get the value of the GNP. Pag sinabi natin GNP again, we just need to add we just need to add the value of the GDP plus the value of NP or net factor income. So let's try to solve and let's see kung magiging parehas ang sagot using the same approach. So say for example, we have the value of agriculture uh, Agriculture, industry, and services. Now, say for example, agriculture is 8,301. Industry is 15,298. Services of 24,544. So, let's get the sum of the three sectors to get the value of the GDP. So, 8,301 plus 15,298 plus 24,544 is equals to, okay, so using the calculator, we will get the same value of 48,143. Say, for example, the value of NPIA is the same as before na 9,859. So in order to get the value of the GNP, again, using the formula of GDP plus NPIA, we will get 48,143 plus 9,859. Of course, you will get the same value. 58,000. Uh, 58,002. Yeah. So, uh, this will be our... Uh, this will be the answer. So, again, uh, using the two approach, we can get the same value. So, I hope you have learned something about measuring the national income. So, if you have some questions, you are free to ask me or PM me using our learning management system. Thank you. Ah,